Hey everyone, welcome to the Beyond Extent podcast, a podcast dedicated to a chat between two environment artists discussing everything about the industry we work in. I'm Timothy and I'm joined by William, who is a friend and fellow colleague of mine. In this episode, we're talking about the PS5 showcase event that happened in the beginning of September, discussing some games and worlds that excite us. This episode really made me realize that I need to take a bit more time to play games and stay up to date too. There's so many games that are being released and I haven't even played the first one yet. But that being said, let's dive in. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beyond Extent podcast. This is episode 21 and I'm your host, Timothy. And we're back here with the unsuspected guest, William. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm... Uh... I'm fresh out of the, I don't know, fresh, come out, fresh of, the out of the week and I'm ready for the weekend. <laughs> fresh out of the oven, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I've been looking forward to this weekend. <laughs> There's nothing special that's going to happen, but it's just, it's been, yeah, we, we talked about it before the podcast. It's been an, uh, a tiring week. Yeah. And for me, it's just, I'm excited because there is nothing going on. That's what I'm excited for. Nothing. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you just need those weekends where you could just chill out, do nothing, even though it's been such a long while since I had one myself, so. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's my own downfall. I'm just a workaholic. Can't stop it. <laughs> stop bragging. Uh, um, <laughs> but anyway, enough about my, uh, my, myself bragging. Hmm? Um... Did you watch the the showcase, the PS Five showcase? I I, I watched uh, I watched some of it. Let's say I didn't watch the whole thing, but I yeah. watched the, uh, the I watched like the clips of the specific trailers. Just the highlight reel. Yeah, like I, I was I was just looking at what what sounded interesting to me, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that stood out? Oh, definitely. Do you want to do you want to go chronological, or should I should I say what I what my favorite was? I mean, just go with your favorite, man. Yeah, what I'm. Def by far most excited about was the Harry Potter one. Yep, it was <laughs> it was kind of kind of weird because I'm not a big Harry Potter fan. I mean, right. it's it's not even technically tied to Harry Potter himself, right? It's more like the the Hogwarts <laughs> legacy. I don't know. Yes, but that's yeah, that's what I that's what I like about it because I don't I don't care about Harry. Voldemort and <laughs> Harry and whatever. I just like the world building and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what I really like about the whole thing and and Hogwarts and whatever and. That's it. It sounds pretty cool. And actually, I was like, I was looking at it, um, and then I was like, okay, this is this is kind of cool. And then at some point, he said, oh yeah, but there's not not just Hogwarts because I was I was watching it and I was I was thinking to myself, all right, cool RPG, Harry Potter, all that, like the the yeah, yeah. The like day to day, fairly, of like a fairly student. linear. Yeah, exactly. And then it was like, oh, but you can go outside and do other stuff and i guess you can like become like a um i don't know you know like work for the ministry of the the magic place mm -hmm. is that what it's called i have no idea uh, yeah i have zero knowledge so, <laughs> so you can work for them and then uh, maybe kill monsters and shit i don't know like yeah, yeah. Th 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 I don't know, maybe you can even become like a like an evil person that would be cool too you do like a do like an evil run and uh just become the new Voldemort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to me, once the ones they they said that they had that, that specific moment where you, I don't know, what were they showing off like flying on on something or like flying creatures, and I was like, oh, okay, this is this is like an open world kind of thing where it could yes. it could still be it could still be somewhat linear, but it can it, it's just way more expansive than what we know the world for. Yeah, which right. is which is really interesting because I I totally agree with what you said before, where it's just like. It's always been focused on on Harry and all the other people, but then there's there's so much world to discover in that universe. Like it's it's crazy that it took so long actually just to to open up the space and to to allow the entire world to be explored in that way. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. I've I listened to the audiobooks like when I was a kid. And I, I actually like really liked just hearing about the world and didn't care so much about the actual characters and what they were doing. <laughs> it was yeah, I, I just that's that's what I like about a lot of games, right? Mm -hmm. It's just uh, 
cool cool worlds hell yeah yeah it was looking really exciting in the beginning i didn't really know what to expect like i knew that it was harry potter related but then the more they showed off i was like oh damn this can this can be really interesting and then um just looking through the list real quick it might be the one that stood out the most to me right cool because i was like oh this is like something something new or at least something that we haven't seen for a really long time yeah oh, obviously that's, that's definitely true yeah just just looking at the list we <laughs> straight after that it was like the the new call of duty i was like okay yeah w i mean we knew that was coming right <laughs> yeah i mean I, I do have to say uh i really liked the the last one the modern, modern warfare. warfare yeah that was that, that's a good game i mean yeah. i didn't i guess everyone's just going crazy about warzone right because it's free and whatever mm -hmm. but um i just i really like the the multiplayer i'm not really a card um a card player yeah i've played it some here and there you know like uh whatever but um that was actually really fun to play and it just looks cool i mm. like the the campaign which is really strange for me i really don't usually play shooter campaigns like that but there's some really cool stuff in there I was, yeah 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 so, I, I, don't know, I, I haven't even watched the trailer for the cold war one yet but i think it <laughs> might be cool yeah I'm, I'm keeping up with it a little bit like i i watch some uh some let's players like play play some of the alpha game that is out like the multiplayer stuff of course right um but it's i was super interested in how they were gonna push this forward because the the war zone stuff that was going to be an ever evolving map that even if there was like new stuff releasing they would tie it in and like change the map over time according to yeah. what's going on with the new games so i was like damn that can be really interesting so they sort of hinted at cold war for like this really long time with all the bunkers and they had like some easter eggs in warzone that you could discover that it was <laughs> that it was linked to cold war in the end um hmm. But then I was I was really curious about like all the nerdy stuff in the background. Like how how are they gonna? Uh, because apparently it's running on a different engine. So, oh really? So you have um, yeah I I I think I was watching Digital Foundry's breakdown of it, and they they mentioned that Cold War is running on a different engine, and that's also why it feels more like a traditional Call of Duty. Huh. It it doesn't have like the the, the satisfying um modern warfare feel of the guns they don't feel as weighty so it goes more the arcadey route again and i guess i really wonder why they would do that <sighs> me too but then i was thinking about it in a way where they have like the more realistic warzone kind of deal on the one spectrum and then they want to push the difference between them as much as possible so they go like full arcadey with a traditional um call of duty I, I mean, yeah, I, I guess, but it's just weird to me because, um, like, Modern Warfare still isn't realistic, right? It's still a COD yeah, yeah, yeah. down to the core. It's just, it looks better and it <laughs> it has a little bit more, I don't know, I don't even I think know. It just, it's just, I think it just, just feels better. Or feels better, yeah. I wonder why. Yeah, but I guess that's that's the thing. It, maybe it feels too good for a COD. It should be, like, like you said, like, super arcadey and everything should, like, happen <laughs> instantly without, like, a cool animation. That is, I don't know. yeah. That is so weird to say, right? But I think you're right, yeah. though. It's like it's Maybe. it's too good, <laughs> or like too too realistic, or feels too good to be an arcade type of uh, Call of Duty. Yeah, because if you play like Modern Warfare Two, it's all like it's 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 super gamey, right? Which I mean, that's the thing. The new COD is still super gamey, but it's uh, I don't know. I was really excited for the direction that they were heading in with uh modern warfare to be honest i i thought wow from if they keep this up from now on like all of the cod games if they're gonna be like on this kind of level it's gonna be amazing but i guess they're they yeah. are looking for something else yeah because this is the first call of duty ever that got me interested in the franchise right so i've yeah i don't i don't really pick sides but i've i've mostly played battlefield never really played call of duty um because there was just no interest i never really liked that really quick pace arcadey feel even though battlefield has a certain element in that as well of course yeah but yeah like call of duty was just too quick a little bit too arcadey for my sake and then when when you look at modern warfare 
they they took like a step back and i was like oh damn this can this can really become interesting so that's why i also tried warzone for a bit like the, the guns feel amazing and then yeah it, it it just came out of the blue a little bit that they just that they still have the arcadey side of call of duty i guess yeah i don't know no it's kind of weird oh talking about that um did you know that uh oh this is gonna go into political <laughs> territory a little bit oh, oh god but did you know that uh that china blocked like a section of the trailer for cold war because they had like I heard something yeah i did hear something about that yeah because they, they had, had like a... them square or something yeah. on it yeah. which is i mean you had like that i mean that's like such a big thing that everyone knows about right so i i, I feel like that's not a good idea to put it in there if if you want to like if you want to publish it in china <sighs> yeah but then i don't think a lot of people know that that is a thing in china anymore really yeah because because they, it's so hard and well, they're so hard and they're censoring that I don't think a lot of people know about that shit anymore. Really? Isn't uh, I would have thought I would have thought that uh, Tiananmen Square is such a big uh, big meme by now. Oh well, God, a meme! Not a, not a meme, but you know what I mean. Like it's such a, a big, big historical landmark. Uh, no, but also on the internet, it has become something else as well. You know, it's oh, like yeah, people yeah. were like but, people were like. Uh, um, writing uh tiananmen square in 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 a chat and then so so the the other person would get banned or something like that you know like crazy stuff oh okay that yeah, was yeah. i think it was all like fake but it was like memeing around i don't know maybe maybe it's just me that i <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not actually even a thing but i just saw it once and i thought yeah. it was a thing <laughs> but yeah so it's um that i would have thought that it's yeah, it's like more known about. I don't know. I, I it just seems weird that they wouldn't have thought of it. I would have thought that they would go, let's go make two trailers, one for China, one for the rest of the world, or just leave it out from the start. Yeah, but then even even if you do that, you're probably gonna gonna get sued or, or like, it's not sued. I think, but it's like you're still gonna get complaints for the one that you release in America because it has footage of Tiananmen Square in it. I don't know. Actually, no because, I think I think I know why they did it. Um, yeah, go ahead. Because we're talking about it right now. You know, not specifically us. Yeah, yeah. They, did, they didn't want us to talk about it. Yeah, we're not going to have just, an impact. <laughs> yeah, but um, they just wanted to talk. They just wanted to have people talk about the game, right? I mean, that's that's no, what it is, but then I think. that doesn't make sense, right? Does it? Or, <laughs> I don't know. Because it's. I mean, it just directly aiming for the chinese government to ban a section of your trailer i don't know there's way simpler why, why ways not? to get the attention no mm, I don't because know. because the thing was it wasn't even the most famous clip from tiananmen square like right. i okay. i looked at the trailer first and i didn't even recognize that it was like the the tiananmen square it was just to me it looked like generic um old school protest video mm, right like if if you if you if you compared it to like the the berlin wall and when that fell like they i don't know like if you just pick a random angle from that happening it could have been the same thing for all i knew okay yeah well okay yeah then okay i thought yeah i i, I never saw the clip i yeah, yeah i guess uh i i was thinking it was like the guy standing in front of the tanks or yeah, something yeah, yeah. Um, no it, it wasn't that like i was expecting that to happen so i when i read the article that they that they took that out i was like wait did i miss that because i was thinking about the exact same clip but then yeah. it was just like yeah it it looked pretty pretty generic but then it was still from that protest so okay yeah i guess maybe then it could have actually been a mistake yeah <laughs> you know just some guy being like protest on google <laughs> <laughs> stock protest footage yeah exactly <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's so weird, man. Um, yeah. Anyway, not to delve on all the political stuff. Uh, right. Oh. Even even though I like talking about that stuff, especially with the relationship to games, it's uh it's always interesting to look into that. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess the podcast bond banned in China now, but that's okay. Well, we weren't getting that many viewers in China anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. What else is on this list? Like, um, they opened up with Final Fantasy, right? 
I don't know if yep. you, if you're a big fan of the games. Never played any of them. Yep. So we can just skip that one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I've, I actually have no idea what the game actually is about. <laughs> I think it's an RPG. Well, yeah, that's. I know it's an RPG. Like I played. I played. Which one was it? I can't even remember the name because there's so many of them. I, I think I played thirteen, and I played that one because it had a real time combat instead of you wait for your turn and then you pick what you do. You could move oh, God, around. It's one of those. Yeah, yeah. It's a. It's a. It's a turn turn-based combat thing well i don't know if it's still but that was like the first one that was switching it up from the turn-based to real time right on. i was like oh, okay, okay I'll, I'll give it a try um but yeah other than that my experiences with final fantasy are a zero so <laughs> uh let's move on <laughs> so we have um what else on this list spider-man that was that was that was looking really good. The Miles Morales. Yeah. I think it's just... Is it like a DLC? Or is it is it like a, an actual second uh, game? I guess it would be a second game. Let me, let me see. We are very well prepared for this podcast, by the way, guys. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, <laughs> we, can, we can do a little bit of research beforehand. But then if we haven't played the games, there's only so much that we can tell about it. That's true. And, it uh, seems like, mm, yeah, it seems like a, like an like another game. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Did you play the first one? Um, I so in Spain, uh, my roommate had it on his PS4, mm. and I just I, I didn't actually play it myself. I don't think I would like kind of watched him play it from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, it's just because for I don't know if there's spiders in the game, but you know I can't fucking deal with that. <laughs> um, I don't think there is spiders in the game. I mean, the game is called Spider Man, so. Yeah, but I don't. I don't really think Spider Man has a lot to do with spiders, right? Like he was bit by a spider and yeah, became yeah. crazy, whatever. And, uh, yeah. But what if know. what if that was the opening sequence? Would you still play it? I would skip it, but yeah. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so, so I was watching. I was watching him while he was playing it, I was, uh, and I thought the game looked amazing. Um, it looks gorgeous, right? Yeah, it, it it really does. But it's just for me, I'm. I have like so many things that I've never read or watched or like never been interested in. I've, I've never been into um, any superheroes really. Like I watched like mm. one Batman movie at one point and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think we're sort of on the same line there because yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not really, I, I wanted to play Spider-Man because the, the world looks so amazing and it looks yeah. so uh, graphically impressive. That's why I wanted to play it, but then I have no attachment with Spider-Man whatsoever. Yeah, same thing. But yeah, I mean, I guess it, like, you could just enjoy it for like as like a good beat em up or whatever it is, right? Oh yeah, yeah, and that's totally how I would play it too. Like, yeah, definitely. Not overthinking it and just having fun in the world itself, because apparently, from what I from what I read from the first ones, is that it's just really fun to traverse the world, because everything like the movement is so fluid when you're swinging between buildings and all that stuff. Th that's what i would think yeah and, and like i really really loved um just cause 2 back in the day i don't know if you've ever played that i played um, the third one i think there was one that was yeah. free on ps uh ps plus like a while back okay yeah i think i th so i i think i played a little bit of three and four as well but they're just not i don't know they're not the same they're kind of I don't know. They're they're not for some reason they just don't have the same feeling. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but, but you have like this hook thing that you can like grapple stuff with, and the cool thing about that is you can like connect two things. Like you can connect a person to a helicopter and then just like have a person hanging from a helicopter and fly around with them and they're they're screaming. <laughs> it's it's hilarious when when you're 15 years old, you know that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And um, I don't know how old I was when I played it, but I I, I reckon it was something around that. <laughs> But, um, and you just like, have to like blow a lot of shit up and it's, it's really cool, but yeah, you have this grappling hook that you can use for, uh, to traverse the world. And I would think that if you played the uh, Spider-Man just like that, you know, just having fun with the, with the mechanics, then I'd reckon <clears throat> it'd be, it'd be a good time. Mm -hmm. Even if you have no idea what any of the people are. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So maybe... Maybe I'll pick it up once I get like a PS5, like a couple of years in. 
Right. I'm always so late with the with the consoles and getting them myself. Yeah, same. Um, um, it's just because I usually just play everything on the PC anyway, and then yeah. when there's enough when there's enough games that are only coming out on one platform, then you know I might think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I bought like the PS4 for um, Horizon Zero Dawn just specifically for that game because I was like, oh, this is. Well, now it is on PC, but back then I was like, oh, this is probably never coming on PC. So mm. if I really want to play it, the world looks really interesting. So that's the only way that I can play that. I don't even remember what I what I got a PS4 for. Oh, um, I think it was... I think it was Uncharted. Uncharted 4. Mm. That might have been it. Yeah. It was... Another oh, game yes, that I because... haven't played. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah, no, it was because um uh, because my I got my PS3 from my cousin when he got his PS4. Oh, uh, okay. so I, I actually just <laughs> I uh, that was the first like console I really owned. I had an N64 that I also got from the same cousin, more or less. But uh, you know, I would just play play on that from time to time. Um, but yeah, the first like big console, like modern console, would, was the PS3 that I got when the PS4 came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, I would just play like uh, the games that my cousin gave me with them, like I don't know, Borderlands stuff like that. And then I played the Uncharted games uh, on the PS3, and I was like, "Wow, these games are pretty cool." Mm-hmm. Just just like from a like I like the story. It was good. The The gameplay was okay. It was like a little repetitive maybe. Um, but just like the worlds are so beautiful. Um, and then I was like, yeah, I guess uh, I guess I want to play the new one. I got the PS4. That mm-hmm. was, yeah. yeah, those games look so stunning. It's, yeah, they it, really do. It's always amazing to see like the next iteration of them because, it, yeah, it, it looks so nice. Uh, yeah, what, what else do we have here? Like Deadloop? Are you aware of that game? Mm-hmm. It's one of the few ones that I that I fully watched. Oh, really? Uh, what do you think yeah. of it? Uh, I think it's gonna be great. I think I actually think it's gonna be amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I and I know that there's you know I know that you are also a little bit on the fence, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think I can. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm hundred percent for the art style. And just mm-hmm. what they're trying to do, and like the graphical art style of like the the, the things in between, or like um, well, with things in between, I mean like the the cutscenes and just like for lack of a better word, like the branding around it, like all the all the style that they have fused within that game. I just don't know about the game itself. Like it it doesn't it doesn't really speak to me. I think when That's it's just fair. doing like the the same loop over and over. I never. I never played Dishonored. Yeah. But that is I sort of feel like it's kind of like that. So that's that's exactly the thing, right? So I think that they are taking all the like super fun stuff about Dishonored and like cooking it down into its essence and mm-hmm. putting it in there. Um just like funnily enough, they're taking the main gameplay loop and just putting it in a game and yep. perfecting it. That's, that's at least that's what I think they're doing. So of course I don't like I can't know how the game is gonna be, but mm-hmm. I played Dishonored one and two. I only like really played the second one like a lot. Um and I I I, I at first I just didn't get it. I, mm-hmm. I was like these games look amazing but I don't really get it. I don't really know what the whole gameplay thing's about. Yeah. yeah. Um, why people are so excited for it. And then I also played Prey. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, Prey was good. Prey was good, oh, yeah. I keep getting confused because I I played both of them. And they're oh, both you played good. the old one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about the new one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the arcane one, obviously. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, and then I played this honor too, and I finally like got it because there's so much cool shit you can do with the magic stuff. Like you can like, I, there, there's this one guy who does these YouTube uh, th- I think is I think his name is like Stealth Gamer or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, he does the craziest shit. He's like, 
he, he, he cuts a person in half and then he throws the body away and then he morphs inside the, the guy's dead body. So then he then he is flying over something and then he morphs out of it and then he jumps on top of another guy and fucking yeah. cuts him in half. It's it, it's it's crazy. It's, it's like crazy. just the stuff you can do. Yeah. It's really cool. And I think that to me, Deathloop sounds like they're taking all of that stuff, all of the, the cool combat mechanics and they're making it some kind of like they're making it the whole focus point mm -hmm. and then all that other stuff with like oh you can you can like manipulate the story yeah that I sounds think, that I, sounds pretty cool to me i think that sounds pretty cool like that's that's something that i'm really curious about to see just how they're gonna do that and how big of an impact it's gonna be because you know, like in games, yeah. sometimes they're like, oh, you can climb this mountain if you just want to do it. And then, oh, no, it's like the edge of the map. Like, you can't get there. Yeah. But then... That's yeah, kind I'm, of the thing that I'm... That's the only thing I'm really skeptical of is how much you're actually going to be able to change. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's the same thing. This this is on a, on a slight tangent, but it's the same thing with um, Watch Dogs, the new one. Where, right. where I'm always like, okay... This is a really cool system that they have in place, but I, I kind of want to see how far you can push it and where the limits are. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious about that one too. But yeah, to, right. get, to get back to Deadloop, I think it's, um, I think it definitely has some potential. Like I'm not gonna, I'm just not gonna call it out straight away because like, we don't even know what the game is about yet. So, of course, I mean, how the game plays and, and all that stuff, but like, <laughs> From the from the teasers and how they how they do all the um, yeah the the graphical things like how they present it it looks really nice so I'm I'm really curious how that's gonna translate into the game yeah um and then I just like that seventies vibe with the orange and the black it, it's, yeah it's just it's it that's the thing if Arcane knows red one thing vibe. it's fucking they have style. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they know how to infuse it in their game. So that's why I'm super interested in that game, even though I'm on the fence, like you said, with the, the gameplay itself. Right on. I do, that's no reason for the game not to do good. Um, What else do we have here? We have... Oh, Demon Souls. Hmm. This is like... um, Is that like a remaster or a remake? I'm actually not sure. Um, what would you call it? Because I think, I don't know, there's been this debate about remasters and remakes and the, and the difference between them. But um, I think if it's the same game, it's a remake. Mm. And if it's if it's like the same base thing. It's oh, a, OK. It's a remake, like if it's the same premise and stuff. It's you know what I mean. Like the one thing is just like a graphical thing, mm -hmm. and like maybe they rebuilt the whole game, but they're only like they're rebuilding the whole game, but they're not changing anything about the story and how like they're not adding new stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I think a remaster is when you do that, but you also add new stuff. Yeah, I'm. I mean, this is actually kind of embarrassing that we don't know, but I think that's <laughs> how it works. So for example, it's, it's, the, it's, it's all right that we sometimes we come out as uh, the stupid people that we are. It's fine. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, for for example, there's the the 13, the comic comic mm. shooter I was talking to you about. Yeah, yeah. That's a remake, I'm pretty sure, because they're just making the same game again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. That, that game looks really interesting just because... Just from a graphical standpoint, again, I know that I I think I might be just a graphical junkie, but just the way that they've been handling their remasters and just updating them to, to the latest graphical standards is just crazy. Like You're talking about uh, Demon Souls now? Or? Yeah, yeah, Demon Souls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it looks it, uh, stunning. Yeah, exactly. And that's like from, I don't know how old the game is, but that's from a... A fairly old game that they just pushed into like the new age by just updating all the graphical stuff about it and i think what's that's most... what i'm wondering if they actually just updated everything or maybe they they actually re like build the game again but just you know didn't change a <sighs> that's, lot that's that's a good question i think there's always going to be aspects that you just have to completely rebuild 
Yeah. And that's why I'm also so impressed that they can keep that same feeling of the game. Because even in the trailers, you can tell, like even if you don't know the game, you can tell that it's like a Demon Souls. Or like it's yeah. set in that, in that space. And I think it's even more impressive that they have to probably, like we're, we're just guessing at this point, but that they probably have to rebuild systems that nail that same feeling that the game had so many years ago. Yeah. I'm just, I yeah. wonder if the, crazy. It, it, did they show the, um, the phalanx? I think that's the, like the first. Is that like the, uh, the giant dude? No, it's the first boss, the huge black glob that like splits into more enemies. I don't uh, think they did. Might be wrong though. They didn't show it yet? No, they had like, um. What is it like the giant the giant demon in in the prison? Yeah. See, this is this that is be, not a thing. Like, been cool to see to see that. Yeah. Have you played uh, those games yourself? That's the thing. I've played Demon Souls. Um, when I got that PS3, um, yeah. I played it on there, but I didn't get very far because I'm I'm I don't know. I'm just not good at those kinds of games. I guess. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Um, <laughs> And I just, I don't know, they're not the kind of game that I want to put my time in to become good at, you know what I mean? Yeah, I just, um, I'm just going to be straight up, I don't have the patience for them. Like, it's just when, when I die a couple of times, I'm just like, okay, look, I I appreciate this game for what it is, but that's not me. <laughs> and I'm just out. Fair, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I beat the Phalanx, uh, and that's it. Like, the first boss, I think I beat, and then that was about it. Yeah. And yeah. that's pretty much my experience with all of the demon of the Souls games. Like I've I've like bought all of them, mm-hmm. and I played all of them until like the first boss. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it and the, I, I find them all very cool, but yeah, like you said, they're they're not the type of game where I'm just like uh, yeah yeah because the the worlds look so interesting, man. Yeah. I think from like a world building building perspective, um, they're probably the most interesting worlds. Because um, they also just don't times. tell you everything, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Pretty cool. Because uh, yeah, that's that's a really good point. Like a lot of worlds, they're really good, but then they're so handholdy that there's there's almost no freedom in them. Yeah. Which is, which is kind of kind of bothersome. And like if if you're playing, if I'm thinking back to Far Cry, um, which one did I play? Like Far Cry Five. I was really into that world, but there was always always that part in the back of your head that you knew that there was something holding your hands or like i don't know it's really tricky to explain but there was also there's there was always this conscience of i'm still playing a game like this. i mean even if you're even if you're looking at something like skyrim right which is mm-hmm. like a comparable world it's skyrim every like there's people around that tell you about stuff yeah and in 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 like dark souls or something it's just you see like a huge cat and also you know, they, they have like this weird look. I can't really, I don't really know how I would call it. But they're like, everything's very eerie. There's, mm. not, there's not like a castle on a hill. No, it's like a castle that has the highest towers you've ever seen. And it, it's like very, it almost looks like it's like squashed. You know, it's all like impossible type of thing. Yeah, yeah. It just looks, it looks completely outer worldly. Like there's, it looks like a medieval castle, but in the middle of some, just like floating in the sky or some shit. You mm. know, there's... Yeah, there's a lot of <clears throat> a lot of interesting fantasy that comes with it, and just everything is made to make you feel small in that game. Mm. Which is uh, yeah, I love it. But then I always wonder. Sometimes I wish that those games had. I don't know if they have them, um, but if they had like super easy modes where like no. Uh, oh, just so you can experience them, even if you're shit. Yeah, exactly. But then. I don't know I, if I that also, would work. Yeah, I also don't want that because so much of the world is reliant on that constant pushing you into the abyss almost to where you're just like defeated. And then there's like this one glimmer of hope that you you kill this boss and you're like, oh my god, I tried that for so long. I'm finally there. And then the journey starts all over again. If you take yeah. that aspect away from those games, I don't think they have the same the same value fair enough yeah i think i think it, it's part of the feeling right mm-hmm. like i'm i'm obviously very into tarkov right now and i and i i was looking on the reddit and there was some someone talking about which he was talking about how 
the possibility of you losing something makes you actually fear death mm -hmm. in a way and that's but that's the purpose I, in, exactly that's exactly the purpose so you don't in other games you just respawn and then you're back in it or in 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 PUBG, if the round's over then it's okay because you only lost that round and then you start over yeah, yeah. on like a even playing field right and um in tarkov you like lose something permanently yeah and it it, it heightens all of the other things that are happening right because if you if you then win something you win even bigger but if you lose you lose even bigger as well and it's mm -hmm. it's the same thing with with like uh with, with like a dark souls right because you the further you go like the, the 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 more health you you have already depleted from the boss the the closer you feel to winning and then if you die you feel like oh maybe i don't have yeah. those those heals anymore yeah the, those and, those and, souls that yeah. you lose and it's it's just yeah it keeps you it it, it like it, it it has like a uh what's the word it's not it's intrinsic you have like an intrinsic motivation to to not die mm -hmm. because you feel like you'll lose something which yeah it, it's just it's just high it, there's, there's there are stakes everything's yeah. uh more interesting when there's stakes to it right i think um when when i think back to the older games that i played like um, one of the first things that i played on the pc was uh tibia which was like a, a really old school mmo and that had some of the same mechanics in it where it was like a ton of people walking around and you could get killed at any any moment because all the entire world was pvp Okay. And when you died, you lose your backpack with all your stuff in it. You lose one piece of equipment. You had, I don't know, six or seven in total. Mm -hmm. And you also lose like 10% of your total level. So you right. can you can yeah. also go levels down. Dang. So that was so punishing. But it has that same kind of feeling where you're afraid of dying. So if you know yeah. that someone's higher than you and he's walking around in the same spots as you, then do you leave that spot because he might try to kill you at some point but there's there's always this this kind of thing that you're thinking about in the background there's there's no i just go to this hunting grounds and then i just kill some monsters get some xp and then get a level no because there might be someone else and they might be trying to kill you that's always like in the back of your head <laughs> yeah i yeah i just it, it just makes stuff exciting right yeah yeah having having everything there like having yeah because in in the stakes. in the in the tarkov like in a in a tarkov game like if you don't have that offset what makes it different from a battlefield exactly yeah it's just i mean that's 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 still what a lot of people are saying is that it's just caught with more steps mm -hmm. but i feel like that's i don't think it's that doesn't yeah it doesn't I mean, do it, it is, justice i think it's true what it does. It doesn't do it justice, in in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I think it's true in a way, but it's it's not a bad thing, because yes, it's COD. In the end, you're just going out there to shoot people, but all the steps you needed to to do to get there are in the way part of the experience, and then they the 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 COD play like the, just like the gameplay deathmatch, let's call it, which never really exists in Tarkov, but you know, I, if we're just talking about PvP fights, mm -hmm. it's it makes that part more meaningful i i feel like yeah 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 for sure i think i think it's also people just have to realize that maybe that game is not for them then maybe they yeah. they want to play something like battlefield or call of duty or whatever i think i think the yeah. people that are saying that specifically are probably the people that want it to be more hardcore because mm. they don't want to play COD and they're like, this is too close to COD even though it's still a completely different game. I oh, think they want it okay. to be like a survival game, you know, like a complete... Because that, that's, I think what they're saying is just that, you know, at a certain point you could just be like, I'm just going to buy my favorite gun every time oh, yeah, and my true. favorite armor so it becomes like a COD instead of having to like find a specific armor and just like having to use what you get, yeah. which is a fair point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Games are so tricky, man. It's such a fine balance. <laughs> you can't make everyone happy, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, going back to the presentation, though. 
Um, what else is in here? We have Resident Evil. I don't know if you played any of the Resident Evil games. Too scary. <laughs> Too scary for me. Um, yeah, I I do love the direction that they're going, especially with the last one. Um, but I think they found like a new direction, and now they're just going yeah, on the same path. I don't know. It looks interesting, though. And then at the end, we have the teaser of the new God of War. Yeah. So that's going to be pretty interesting. Even though, again, I haven't played the first one yet. So Me neither. But I, I that's that's like a game on my list, but it's just not very high up on the list. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, for me, it might be high up the list, but then I just never get to it. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's I like I rarely even play on the PS4 at all. Like I played for for Ghost of Tsushima, mm-hmm. and then I still do from time to time now. But not like, not it's it's nothing. I never like play a PS4 game for ages. It's always the PC for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same for me too. Like uh, I still need to finish Ghost of Tsushima. Um, me too. Yeah. Oh, but it's such a good game though, and that's I think that's what I like about it too. It's just. Just the the general notion that you just play the game whenever you want to and you you can just enjoy it. Like, there's no... I don't know, there's no rush for me to complete a game or to master a game. I'm just playing games for the fun of it. And if I don't want to play it, I'll play it some some other day. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Hell yeah! Um, Yeah, I think that was more or less it. Like, there's some other stuff. Um, I don't know if you've seen the Oddworld stuff. (laughs) <laughs> Have you ever played any of the old world games? I don't think so, no. Oh man, but I I don't uh, know. Me. Like this this looks so weird. Like it looks Odd World Soulstorm. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I don't know. It looks like an outdated game. I feel I feel like it's kinda hard to say that, but it they doesn't look like the crazy frogs. <laughs> Yeah, oh, like I'm a gummy bear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. What is this? I'm looking at a scene where like a, the face of a guy is just being zoomed in, and it just it's just a it's just a PNG image, and it's zooming on his eye, and then there's a guy talking in the background. I have no idea. Wait, what I... the hell? Yeah, I don't know about that game. It's such we- it's so weird that it's in the lineup because it was one of the most intriguing games on the xbox at some point i still remember that when when that came out everyone was like oh my god it's such a good game it's so unique and just to see it here i'm just like oh okay i don't know what kind of game is it (laughs) oh i see it now it's like a platformer yeah uh i don't know well i just lost interest then (laughs) yep (laughs) I don't know. It just looks so weird. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's one of those games that is like instantly a write-off and then it's going to be released and then there's so many people saying good things about it that it might be worth checking out. Yeah. But it's just, I, I can already tell that it's not the type of game I play. <laughs> I just don't play side-scroller type stuff usually. Yeah. It's, it's really not my thing. Yeah. It's a little bit weird to see it in this lineup, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, like uh, it's twenty-two <laughs> years. Are you kidding me? Twenty-two Since years. The last one came out. Oh yeah, yeah. Twenty-two years already. It's as old as me. Jesus Christ. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for making us feel all old. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> Yeah, you think you think you're gonna buy a PS5? Uh, at some point, probably. Yeah, I see that people are just going crazy for like the pre-orders, but that's always yeah. a trap. You should never I'm, go for a pre-order, in my opinion. Just I'm, to wait. I'm, yeah, I'm not really a pre-order guy. Yeah, I'll just if I just like if it's music or something, if I really support the artist, maybe. But by yeah, now yeah. you don't really need to buy music anyways. But you know. Whatever. Yeah. But yeah, like, that's yeah. that's the thing. Like, if there's if there's artists, I'll buy some prints or an art book for a game that I really love. But like a pre-order for a game goes all nah. I can mm-hmm. just I can just wait. I have time. Yeah, I'm I'm not too bothered really. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, awesome. Well, the the pricing is looking really good, though. Was it like, uh, well, they're doing this this disc list thing, where yeah. it's um, what is it, two ninety nine? That's pretty good. So, yeah, it it has me thinking about. No, it's four hundred. Four hundred. Yeah, and is the it... normal one is five hundred. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I got it confused with the Xbox. Then I, I think that this list one. I don't know the names because they keep fucking up with the names. Like it's so it's so bad. Xbox <laughs> with their namings. <laughs> but like their cheaper version was like two ninety nine, I think. Right. But yeah, I'll I'll keep playing on my PC. I'm not. Yeah, too... I'll I'll do as well for the most time. <laughs> oh. All right, cool. Um, so we're getting to the forty five minute mark. Should we switch it up? And because we didn't do like a question last week, last week, should we um, do the question that we have prepared for that one? Uh, sure. Uh, okay. So this is going to be like a, a bit of a switch up because we've been talking about games and like the new releases of PS5 and whatever. And now we're going straight back to portfolios, basically. But um, okay. Louis Mesquita asked how many skills they expect to see in a junior's artist portfolio like the basics about everything or three very good skills are enough um, for example he mentions modeling materials and lighting as one of the examples so mm, okay yeah you want to so, you want to go ahead i just want to make sure that I, I i understand the question it's like mm -hmm. should you show a little bit of everything or should you focus on like a couple disciplines i guess right yeah, yeah, I think that's a question. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's in my yeah in my personal experience, it's better to focus on some things a little bit more, and yep. just like hint at having other interests. So, for example, I would do like yeah some props, some some environment with like hard surface modeling and some texturing, and then you know maybe do a little bit of lighting on there as well and just show that you can do that as well mm -hmm. but focus on specific things because then they'll see oh he's interested in doing this he he put some time into learning it and he can do it on a on like a good entry level so probably all the other stuff he can learn as well right mm -hmm. but i wouldn't show like nothing else like i wouldn't just show one specific thing try and like like I said, like maybe put a little bit of it in there, but if you're if you're gonna focus on it less, it also means that you know if it if it's not that good, it's not gonna ruin all the other work as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Like it's better to show off at least a couple of good skills that puts you in the top of the class, so to say, than to just have like a bunch of mediocre skills and not send out anything. Yeah, especially big companies aren't looking for like a one size fits all, right? They're looking for. Yeah, yeah. that's for a, that's a really good point that... to bring up too, because there there is a difference between like an indie studio and like a bigger studio. Definitely. Um, and there's also, I don't know if this was intentional, but he asked like, how many skills do they expect to see in a junior artist portfolio, and even junior artist in this case might be a bit too generic because there could be like yes. a junior lighting position where you know that if you show off really good modeling and, and materials but no lighting well i mean it's obvious that you're not going to get that job right <laughs> it's just irrelevant yeah that's yeah. the thing that's that's a big one yeah if it's not not all uh, applications are created equal so if you look at them and and kind of find out like that's exactly what we we're talking about in our portfolio uh, in our application episode right mm -hmm. yeah Is exactly kind of single out what they're looking for and then focus on that bit so i don't know i applied at crytech ages ago right and they told me if you've got some cool stuff in there you design you, you like you show some cool designs but we just don't know if you can take a photorealistic image and make, like, and just copy it, you know? Mm hmm Like, just, we don't know if you can recreate something photorealistically. And that's yeah. what just, what, what was missing for them, because that's what they're all about. 
Yeah, exactly. And if you if you want to go through like the application episode, that's episode fifteen of the podcast, by the way. Right. Want to throw that in there? But yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. Like you need to. How should I say this? Yeah, you need to stand out in something. Like mm-hmm. it's it's so important to capture that initial, uh, that initial point of attention with your portfolio that someone's like, yeah. oh, that's a cool piece. And then they click on that piece and then they see your portfolio. That's how it starts. Because if, if everything is kind of mediocre, then that first click is never going to happen. Or like the chance of it happening is going to be less, of course. I, uh, I, I think that's exactly the point. You want at least some part of it to be special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would say, I think you can do both. Where you can have um, a really good skill. It doesn't have to be three very good skills. But say say you're like really good at modeling stuff, but then the materials aren't that great, and maybe the lighting isn't that great. Like they can they can still see that you're really good at defining a shape, defining um, just the model itself, and then they know that you need some work on the materials and lighting. But that that stuff that you can learn inside of a studio too. And yeah. the same applies to like other skills too, where maybe the models aren't that great, but then the overall scene composition is good. And I would I would even say that I pull from that in a big way. Like if you look at the individual models, they might not be, well, they're definitely not going to be as good if you look at someone else with like a really good prop portfolio. But that's not what my portfolio has been focused on. It's yeah. just the the big the big stuff the compositions color contrasts all that kind of stuff that makes for like a good overall scene because yeah I think in most in most if not all bigger studios um, you're not gonna touch props and environments at the same time I think uh, there's always like this element of specialization that comes into it. Yeah, I think that's. I think uh, you can actually really like see that in our bo- like in, in in our current portfolios, right? Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I'm I'm more focused on those those props and stuff, and that's I have I have some scenes in there that are like full environments, but mm-hmm. compared to yours, they're a little bit more basic and they're more focused, like they're more filled with like tiny props instead of having huge modular sets for yeah. the most part. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and then and, and for you it's the opposite. So it's it's just yeah, it's focus on what your strength is and what you want to have in there, like what what you want to have in in your portfolio because that's what that's gonna determine what you're gonna do day to day. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. We I think we keep repeating this, but it's such <laughs> an important point. Like, do what you love. Like, if you're going to be spending eight hours a, a day working on something that you hate, I mean, that's not going to last long. So, yeah. And if it's just modeling, then then just put a lot of modeling in there. Still show that you can do the whole process. But then at least you're going to spend the time, your time modeling and maybe texturing instead of doing set dressing, which you may, might not like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And to just to add on to that point, it might be good to maybe reach out to someone else. Maybe if you just want to focus on models all the time, you can just make really good models, unwrap them, and then ask your buddy, who's like a, a texture artist, to just do the textures for you and just build up like a portfolio in that way. Yeah, and you could put the high poly and the low poly on your portfolio and he could put the texture on his and you just credit each other. Mm-hmm. So- it's yeah, yeah I, I don't think it's like the b- best thing to do but like because 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 you would have to like then you could only become like a texture artist right which is is a job in some studios but others you know you have to do the whole pipeline yeah but yeah, it can, if, if you're if you're like dead set on i never want to touch a model i always want to do textures then yeah <laughs> yeah i yeah that's the thing like the more specialized you go the bigger the risk becomes or like the the less um the less applications that are open for that position so yeah but 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 the but those applications that you are qualified for then you're probably going to be a lot more qualified than other people might, might be yeah yeah exactly yeah i would it's, i would say that it is it's quality yeah yeah exactly i think it also 
it also somewhat depends on like the other people that are going for that um discipline you know because i i can tell that from my view weapon artists there's a lot of people that want to do weapons but there's a whole ton of people that are not good at making weapons yeah so yeah it's uh depending on what you pick it might also be like a, a bigger hill to climb but that doesn't mean you can't get there yeah definitely it's it's all achievable usually hell yeah it's all achievable so wow that's we just keep ending on those grandiose motivational <laughs> notes every time i think it's good man yeah. keep, keep the motivation up for the people out there um but yeah that was uh yeah i think we, we can just end it on that note too this was uh yeah. this was episode 21 of the podcast so thanks everyone for listening i hope you enjoyed this one and thanks will for coming on again thank you for having me and thank you guys for listening all right catch you in the next one bye bye We hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. If you did, then you can check out the playlist on the right for more episodes and don't forget to like, subscribe or share with friends. If you're an environment artist trying to break into the industry or just looking to grow your skills, you can find a ton more resources like weekly tips, blog posts and more on beyondextend.com. But that's going to do it from our side. Thanks so much for joining us and a shout out to all of our Patreon supporters who made this possible.